welcome to Cake Craft with Jeanette. This is episode five. If you've been watching the other ones, thanks very much for um, following along. We've been making some really cool stuff, like some fairy tree houses, we've had some owls, little sleepy gnomes, all sorts. So today, I thought we'd mix it up a little bit again. Um, we're going to do um, a little animal model, this little polar bear. Super cute little face on him. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick technique how to do a, a little painted backdrop for them with the northern lights. So very quick techniques, quite simple, using cocoa butter for painting with. So a little bit different from what we've been doing before. Um, so I'll just let you see this wee model up close. If you can see that. Look at his little face. So cute. So we're going to model this today. This is made from modelling chocolate and um, sugar paste mixed together. So I'll explain a bit more about that when we do it. So I'll show you how to do the fur technique and the little face, the eyes and these little paws and so on. Okay, so that is what we are going to do today. So let's get started. So to model the polar bear, we're going to use a mix of sugar paste and the sugar paste I use is Cape Duchess covering paste. So I'm using a 50-50 mix of that sugar paste with modelling chocolate and the modelling chocolate I make myself. It's like a candy clay made with candy melts, okay? Um, and I find a 50-50 mix gives you a really nice sort of sculptural quality to it. It blends really nicely. You get a little bit longer working time um, than just maybe a modelling paste. So you can see that if, if I've got a seam to blend there, it literally just blends away. You know, it's, it's so easy to, to get rid of seams and... Um, sculpt with it. So that's why I like using this. So that's what we're going to use. And it's just white. It become, It's slightly off-white because my modelling chocolate is slightly off-white, but that's absolutely perfect for this wee guy. That's the sort of colour I want for him. Okay, so we're just going to start with a ball of paste and we're going to model the whole body shape, apart from the hind legs and ears, out of this one piece of paste. Okay, um, this is just kind of the way I like to work with a lot of these things. So I'm just going to roll this into a sort of more cone kind of shape. And I'm, when I model him, I'm going to model him facing straight up. So his nose is straight up in the air and then we'll just bend him into shape after we've done that. So just a little cone shape like this. I bring him over to compare. There we are. And then where his back is, it's slightly narrower. So I'm just going to work in a little area where it's slightly nar narrower. You can see here, I'm just using my fingers to press in a little narrower section, almost like a seam up his back. Okay, so a little sharper section there. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to mark out a sort of a chin area where I want the head to be started from, it's so around about there. And then with a polar bear, I studied quite a lot of polar bear heads during this because I realised, I started modelling it just myself and I realised I was doing something wrong. And the thing I was doing wrong was that there's not, it's like a very flat head. On other bears, there's like a, a bigger dip at where the eyes are, but this is really flat. It's only just got a tiny little bit of a dip before the nose comes out. And that's what I was doing wrong. I couldn't figure out why it didn't look right, but we figured it out eventually. <laughs> So it's always a good idea to work from reference photos if you can, okay? So make sure you're doing that because your brain never quite remembers everything that you think it does, especially when you're trying to model something kind of realistic. So that is a very narrow shape. So when we pull out the nose here, just make sure that you don't make a big dent for his eyes and his brow because it's not there. It's just a very small, shallow one, okay? Set you there again. So this is my back seam at this side here. So this is his chin, or just under his, ne uh, under his head. And so I'm just going to pull out a little nose area. So you'll notice I'm not wanting to pull out from here. I'm just going to pull from here. So I'm press using this hand to support. And I'm just pressing out a little area here. Okay. So at the minute it looks like that, but we're going to narrow it out. And then start narrowing it out here. So just like a little nose area and if you find you've got too much that's okay you can just trim a wee bit and because this is really blendable um you'll be able to just blend out all the, the marks from that okay so just start pulling out a wee nose like that there we are 
So then what I do is I look at the eye area and the head area, and I'm just going to push back where the eyes will be just ever so slightly to give a little indent where I want those to go. So I'm pushing in here. Not too much, just a little. And I'm going to give a very slight dent, like we were speaking about, for his brow. Very slightly though. It's easy to overdo it. Okay. I think I'm going to trim a bit off that because I think it's too long. So I'm just going to use a knife, trim a little bit off. So you can see it's quite rough, but I'm going to smooth all that out because it's this nice blendable paste. Just work that into the shape. Oh, over. Just rounding off the edges and smoothing down all the rough bits first. We've got to smooth it again. Oh there, that's a better shape. Okay. So it's it's not quite a triangle as such, but it is slightly narrower under his chin than his nose. So you can just add that in a little bit, just press in a little bit to get a little bit more of a triangular shape. A lot of fiddling. <laughs> but it's worth it. Right. There we are. So we've got the rough sort of shape that we're wanting to work with now. Let's keep those eyes pressed in. So you can see it's holding itself quite well here. Now I'm in quite a cool climate, I'm in Scotland. So if you're in a warmer climate, you might find that you need to put a support in this to keep it up. So that's fine, just use like a cocktail stick or a, a bamboo skewer or something like that. You can just um, pop a wee skewer in to help hold this up. But remember that we're going to bend the neck over, so don't put it too high up or it'll come poking out through the top here. But just enough to maybe help support it if you need it, okay? But it holds up quite well in this colder weather here. It's right dreary today. It's bored and worrying and a bit cold. But that means this holds up nicely. <laughs> so I'll not complain too much. There we are. Okay. So you're just slowly, slowly adding little um, shape. To the to the lump of paste as it were there we are so now that i've done that i'm going to take um oh now these tools i'll just explain these tools because this is what i use throughout these are cake duchess tools okay it's a little tool set of four tools they're quite heavy duty ones um, and i find them brilliant for sculpting so this is what i'm using throughout okay there's ones like ball tools um dresden tools um, this one's got a knife on it, you know, so that you might have tools that are kind of similar at home that you can you can use. Um, but this is what I'm using throughout. I love these. <laughs> now, I'm looking for my ball tool. There we are. So I'm going to use the smaller ball tool and I'm just going to pop the eye sockets in. So I'm just turn it round to face you so you can see nice and evenly where you're going to put them. And... Just pop into the eye sockets either side of the nose. Now they're they're quite high up, remember, don't do it too low down, make sure they're quite high up so you've got that nice flat brow still. So I'm just going to pop one in this side of the nose and one in the other. Okay. And there we are. Now I'm not going to put the eyeballs in just yet. I'm going to shape some more of this polar bear before we do that. Um, the next thing I will do is start to work on the legs and just start pulling out the shape for the front legs. The back legs I add on separately, but the front legs I'll pull out from this shape. So if we take um, this tool, which I, will be like a Dresden tool for you, the sharper end, if you don't have these. Um, First of all, sorry, first of all, I'll just press down at the front to bring out like a little kind of paw area. If you can see that, it's just a little little area. And then I'm going to use my dressing tool to kind of split that in two, basically. So 
So these are where the two legs are going to come out. And you don't go too high up, not big long legs, you know, they, they're quite low down. Just like this. And then from there, just bring a little line round to one side and a little line not too deep round to the other side. And that just gives you a guide for where we're going to work um, the legs out from, basically. Okay, so what you're trying to do is have a little bit of a belly area and then the nice um, two little legs come in slightly further forward from there. So we just work on shaping that out. So you see at the minute it's all just kind of lumpy. So we need to bring the little the chest back and the legs out a little. So I just kind of work around with my tools and my fingers to kind of model out the shape. Um, I put in the side of the leg as well, which helps you then pull out those legs. So just a little line like this. Same on the other side. Just heading ever so slightly backwards towards his back. You can see you're slowly bringing out the shape that you need. And you can press this in on both sides. We're just slowly starting to shape it. So just take your time with all this, just work away with the paste. You'll notice I'm not handling it too much. If you handle it too much, you'll get a really big sticky mess. You need quite cool hands. And if you can, leave it sitting to model as much as you can. So don't touch it too much if you can. So I'm just going to reinforce those lines a little. You can see that's starting to bring out the nice shape that you need for behind this leg. So I'm going to use this the rounder edge of the Dresden type tool <laughs> and just start marking in a wee bit of shape. So I'm just trying to round this leg off so it's not quite such a sharp um, mark from where you cut it. And there we are. So now we'll just flatten out the paw areas and the paws are quite big. You want quite big, big paws on this, guys. These are what they're known for. They're big padded feet. Nice big paws like that. And again, if you find you've got too much paste here, um, that's not a problem. You can just nip a little bit off the bottom, just pull a little bit off the feet and then start mold, um, pulling it out again. I think we're not too bad at the minute, but just in case that happens with you, you know what to do. So I'm really just working down a wee seam down the front of the legs. When I say seam, I just mean like a wee ridge kind of shape, I think is the best way to describe it. And there we are. And then back in again with this Dresden tool to define that leg area again. I'm just going to stretch them up a wee bit because they do have quite long lean bodies towards the front so don't make them too dumpy, too chubby. You want them kind of slightly leaner, they are quite quite lean around the neck I discovered looking at the photos. It's funny how you think you know what something looks like until you try and model it without looking at photos. And you realise you don't quite know them as well as you did. <laughs> All these wee differences between animals just makes all the difference. Right, so there we are. So the next thing to do is these little feet then, these little paws at the front will add some definition in there. So four little marks to make five little toes with my Dresden tool. Just bring it over so you can see a bit better. One, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to lift them up just so I can kind of round from underneath and mark those in a little bit better. And I'm going to use the rounded edge of my Dresden 
and I'm just going to press down the toes so they become a little bit flatter. So you have to remember you're putting a texture over all of this so don't worry too much about exact details in the minute because a lot of this kind of disappears into the texture so as long as you've got the two little leg areas worked out and um, the beginnings of the hips behind and then you've got this nice head shape that's all you really need to worry about at the minute okay now i think we'll stop for a quick 60 second break and counting <laughs> um, and when we come back we'll continue on with the rest of the detailing Welcome back to part two. We're going to continue with the modelling of the polar bear. So we're just making sure that we've got those nice little front legs in a, an approximate sort of um, position that we want. We're going to add a lot of fur texture on this, so it doesn't matter too much as long as they're kind of this sort of shape, slightly forward from the body. OK, so um, next I'm going to start adding some texture. Um, so just following the lines of the body. Yeah, I'll try and do this so you can see. Um, so I'm going to come from the middle of the legs at the front and just start using my Dresden tool, the sharper end, and just start adding some texture in there. And then the opposite way on the other leg. And just slowly working all the way up. Now, I'm not going too deep, and I'm trying to use sort of shorter strokes to begin with. Just following the lines of the body. So at the front, you want the, the fur to all sort of follow down to that middle leg part. And then for the legs, you just start from the mid, from the, the join of the two legs. To the middle of each leg if that makes sense and then from the outer leg to the middle of that leg again okay just keep working away like that same on the other leg coming out from the middle there around to the front And then around the outer edge. And then towards the bottom of the leg, you want to start trying to pull out a few little strokes so it ends up beginning to look like furry feet. Just pull a few, a few out there, and blend them up the way into the leg as well.
So just working on as much of that texture as you can. All the way around. And then from, this here is going to be behind a leg, but I'm just going to start from there anyway because it keeps me right with my directions of lines. <laughs> so this is basically his belly. So we're just going to drag some lines around for fur that would be disappearing behind there. Same on the other side. Okay, and then if you turn around the back, I usually just put a little very light line right at the back of the body so I know roughly where I'm heading to, so all the fur will kind of head towards that on either side. So we just continue with the belly area here of fur, coming out from that line at the back. You can see I'm keeping the direction of the fur. Heading down towards the bottom there. It's a good idea to have a few photographs at this point. There'll be loads of photographs of polar bears sitting. If you look up polar bear sitting, you'll find loads of that on the internet. And that really does help you get the right um, fur direction. Because the hair all lies in a certain direction. And if you don't get that right, it begins to look a bit funny, actually. So if, if you can, sit with reference photos and just have a real look at all the fur direction on all the different parts of the body and it'll really help you get it looking a wee bit more realistic. Just bringing that round to eventually join almost at the top there. There we are, so slowly working up. And then down the side of the sort of, um, what would you call that, front leg muscle <laughs> oh like our shoulder i suppose the shoulder there we go <laughs> just work the fur around from the front up to his back here and then slowly start bringing the leg here up as well All starts to blend in, looking good. Same on the other side. Bring it all towards the back. And blending that leg here up to the top as well. Slowly working your way up the whole polar bear, basically. Same in the neck area. And the neck area tends to kind of come around the neck, but make them slightly shorter marks the further up you get because the fur gets much finer once it gets to the face. It doesn't have big long hair, you know, at this point. It's just try and make the, the lines a little shorter and not so deep. If you find that your model gets too soft, just stop and let it sit for a few minutes and you'll find it um, hardens up again. So you can handle it easier. So just slightly finer, slightly lighter. And there you're coming up. And I just would go right up until the sort of chin area, just up to here. And then we'll work on the head kind of separately. So you can see we're picking up a good lot of texture now beginning to look a bit more like a hairy polar bear. The good thing about the modelling chocolate and sugar paste mix is that it does stay workable for a long time so you will get a good chance to to do all this. Not just like 40 minutes in a demo. <laughs> You'll have longer to work on it than that. Okay, 
through. And let's have a look how he's shaping up. He's looking pretty good. Okay, so you'll notice I'm still keeping him up. I'm gonna, because it's just, I find it easier to work on the face like that and then we'll just bend him into place um, after we've done everything else. So uh, let's add his wee back legs on now. So I'm just gonna take some more of my paste mix. And I'm going to roll two teardrop shapes. Let's check them against the other one. Check them against this. Yep, so you want them sort of that kind of size. So it's going to fit from, you want the, the foot to tuck in at this um, indent here where the belly and the leg meet. So you want the foot to be there, the wider part of the teardrop shape, and then we'll blend this leg right back um, into, the, into the body or the back. So just something like that will be good. Let's take it off so I can see sizing for another one. It's a bit big that one, so I'll just bring it down a little. Don't have to be identical, but just roughly the same size would be good. <laughs> she says, trying to make them identical. <laughs> There we are. So two roughly about the same size. And we'll tuck one round this side and one round the other side. Turn them this way so you can see. Okay. So just tuck in nicely into that wee indent there. Okay. So let me see now. Yeah, there we are. Okay. So you can see that the polar bear here, he's got like a flatter pad area so we need to push that area out or make a little indent in here so that it gives it more of that foot pad shape rather than just a wee blob of paste so i'll turn them around here and i'm going to use the rounded edge of my dresden tool and i'm just going to press in oh how am i going to show you this turn around a bit more yeah that's better i'm just going to press in a little area here yeah I'm using my finger as a support and then I'm going to use the ball tool, big ball tool, to press it up on a flatter area. And I'm just going to quickly do the same on the other side. There we go. Okay. And then, turn this way, oh, we're a wee bit uneven. And then I'm going to press them in flatter a little bit so that towards the body. So they're not quite such a kind of weird rounded shape. I'm beginning to take shape. There we are. And then we'll work on some texture as well here. So I'm going to. Sorry, I've done in there. I'm going to blend this paste in first of all. Just at the back. We can leave a little line here because we want it to look like there's a little hip area, a little leg line. But just at the back. We don't want it to look like his legs are coming from his back. Or joined at the back, so we just make that into more body shape. Body mass. There we are. And then I'll just define where I would want those little legs to actually come from, as it were. So let me think. Yeah, like that. There we are. So then just work on your texture again. Now, because I'm turning this round to you, so you can see all the time I'm losing texture here, but we can always pop that back in, like I was saying, because it is such a good um, material for blending, you know? It does um, stay workable for a long time. So we'll get that popped back in. But you guys can just leave it sitting and work your way around, okay? So just add in a little bit more fur texture. Gonna define that leg with a little line. more fur. Same on the other one. Just 
work in some more fur. Just come in from underneath these butt as well. Bring some fur up. So it looks like it disappears underneath. Okay, so then for the feet, just the same as you did with the front paws, um, on that sort of little ledge that you've lifted up, just mark in, there's my knife, I'll use the knife this time for a finer line, just mark in a few toes, one, two, three, four, and I'll just quickly do it on the other side as well, oh, just bring this out flatter, two, three, four. And then the finger behind, just flatten them out a little bit so we get that nice flat foot, foot pad that they, they have. There we go. Just maybe a little line, a little indent above the toes just to separate it from the leg as it were. And then same as you did with those other feet pads as well, just a little, a little bit more texturing down onto the feet. There we go. Same on this one. Just a little bit more far. And then what I tend to do is just give it a tiny little bit of a, an indent in here where the foot is, halfway down the foot, just to kind of give it a wee bit more of shape. Yep. Okay. So that should be legs added now. You can press it into shape if you feel it's come out of shape, but just watch that you don't lose your texturing again. Just pop that back in if you need to. I've just got a shape. Is butt a bit better. <laughs> there we are. Right. Let's work some texture back in, see because I've been lifting it so much to let you see. Okay. So when we'll take another quick break and when we come back, we'll then be able to um, work on the final details on the face. That's what we'll do next. See you in a minute. part three we're going to finish off the modeling for the head so if we look at the nose we've got quite a sort of rectangular flat nose here the polar bear's head it's a very fine long head okay so very long and slender and we spoke about earlier on about how there's not a very big bridge to his nose as it were and um, it's just very shallow um, his cheeks are quite wide, his flats, his head, sorry, is very flat on the top. It's more of a long head than a, than a rounded head as such, okay? So it is very sort of fine modeling that's gonna get the last little details right, okay? Bit tricky, but hopefully we'll get there. So first thing is this nose. Now you can see that we've got the little flat bridge. It's a very flat head. I've not got a big rounded head on it, very flat, okay? So keep that, we want to keep this shallow bit here and the nose is very subtle but if you just tilt this nose down, just stroke it down almost to give it a little rounded edge to it, that's much more like a polar bear nose, believe it or not. So slightly rounded like that is better, okay? Now I'm just going to take my ball tool and pop, oh, wrong one, pop those eyes sockets back in. Okay. So that's what we're looking at just now. 
So the nose is quite flat as well. It's quite flat along the top, but it is slightly rounded off like we just did. Okay, just give it a slight curve to it almost. The whole body is almost like a curve. Do you see that? Yeah. So now that we've got that bit, um, we'll pop into eyeballs. Now I'm just using tiny little um, sugar balls, little black sugar balls. You can roll up a little bit of black paste if you want. It really wouldn't matter, but I just find it easier to pop these in. I'm just popping them into place and I'll press them in a little bit further. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to add in a couple little marks around his eyes to help shape that. So I'm going to put in a little mark just from the inner corner of the eye out a little bit. Same on this side. Almost like giving him an eye bag if you like. <laughs> when you've been up too late and you get your big eye bags. It's a little bit like that. And then the other, piece, the other little line I'm going to do, if you can see this hopefully, is a little line from the upper inner eye down his nose ever so slightly. There, that one. They are tiny little lines, but for some reason or other, they just make all the difference. So I'll try and do this so you can see it's a bit tricky to show. Here we go, try that. So just from here, down a little bit. Okay, and that just starts to define the nose, which is what we're looking for. I'll just pop that other one in. With all these demos, what I do is I pop up um, some close-up photos as well on my web page so that you can see all the detail if you need to go back and look. It's a bit easier than trying to pause a video, isn't it? So. If you want to see any of the close-up photos of this, I'll make sure I post these after we're finished. And um, you can, yeah, you can just pop on them and see um, all the closer-up shots. So that's on jmcakecraft.com. You can go there and there'll be um, close-up photos for you. Okay, so I'm just going to mark a little line very softly right down his nose. That just gives me a little centre line, roughly, to work from. And I'm going to add in some more texturing again. So over the back of the head, it's almost like you're giving them a side parting in a way. So just work out from the middle of that line across the top of his head. And just stop just before um, you get to the eyes. I'll show you what to do there. Same on this side. Marking all the hair. There we go. Um, so when you get to the, the cheeks and the eyes area, it's just the same, just coming from, from the eye area this time though. So work from the eyeball out. And just add in some extra wee bits there. Try not to go too hard and deep with the, the your tool here because it's... um. It's a little bit finer detail you're trying to do here. And very gently just work down your down the nose. Just from that middle line out. Okay. And then round the cheek area again, you're just kind of a few more lines around there. Bringing it round the cheek to under his chin. Same on this side. You can't really do too much texturing with it, this guy. You know, it's, I would say once you've done all your main texturing, just go back and add in tiny, tiny little lines all over. And it just helps give that wee fur, fur look. I'll do the main texturing for you just now. Okay. So just working your way around the whole thing like that, basically. Okay. Now we need to mark in a little mouth. Isn't he cute? It's, got a, it's almost got a little smile, this guy. That's cute. So we'll try and do that. So just not right along the whole nose area, okay? You can see, you look at the top of the nose. The top of the nose 
runs from here back at the eyes. It's not as far back as that. It's just a little bit, a little bit in. So we'll do that. Yeah, I'll just make myself a little mark so I can see what I'm doing. There, yes. Okay, so we're just bringing it in with the Dresden tool, the sharp end, a little line round to the front. And then follow it round the front. And then the same on the other side. So I find if you go in with the point, mark where you want it to end, a little smile and just run around like that. It is very, very fine work, so just go easy. But the good thing is, as we've said a few times already, this is really malleable, mouldable stuff, so um, you usually get a few goes at it. Okay, here's his little smile. And then we're going to mark in the nose. So the nose is on like a little triangle shape and it just sits out just no more from the the n muzzle <laughs> is that the right word muzzle i think so so i'm just going to make a little mark where i want the top of the nose and i'm just going to push in from the side to make a little triangle shape sitting just out and no more from the the muzzle okay and then once we've got that, we can add two little nostrils. We'll use a finer point in that version of the one. This one. Okay, so two little nostrils. One in here. And one in the other side. And I'm just going to work those out a little bit with my Dresden tool. So basically pulling slightly up and out, just slightly, not, not huge nostrils. And then flatten that nose off with your finger, cap it down. It's all a bit fiddly this. And then I put a little line up the middle of it, but just gently. Bit tricky to see this on camera probably but hopefully you'll see it in the pictures once I get those posted up. Okay, little nose. So just make sure that you haven't lost, see his nose is going up the way, we don't want it that way, we'll want it this way. There, that's better. Okay, and I'll just add the last three bits of texture prefer along his nose. They're just really lightly, these ones, and very small. There we are. Okay. So, we will add these little ears next. Two little bits of, two little balls, rather, of um, your paste mix. There we are. I'm just using a, I'm using a very small flat kind of ball tool. So something very small like that, whatever you have. Um, I'm just going to flatten these out ever so slightly, not too much. And they sit quite far back the head, you can see there. So take them right back the head. Okay. And pop on the ears. So something round about there is going to be right. Okay. And I'm just going to press those in, make a little indent and a little hole to attach them on. And you can add a little bit of texture if you want. Those just a few lines is just enough. There we go. Okay. Now the other little important bit in his nose, I just remembered, I'll tell you, is it looks a wee bit like a pig nose at the minute, it's not quite right. So what I do is just uh, I can explain this here. I almost pinch just at the top of that nose there. 
just in in here slightly pinch it in okay now this does this nose does need a good bit of fiddling about it's it's like they are quite awkward to do but hopefully once i've um, posted up the images and things you can see more easily all the details and the and the steps that you need to do okay not easy to show on this Okay, so that is your polar bear pretty much done. Um, we'll just paint his nose and paint his um, little eye highlights as well. But we can do that um, when we move on to the next stage, which is we'll paint um, the backdrop. We're going to paint the more northern lights now. So I've got a little board covered in black um, sugar paste. And that's how I'll, I'll use to show you the painting of the Northern Lights on that. So when we're doing that, we'll just um, add in the little details of the painted mouth and painted nose and things and these little toenails. OK, so another quick break and we'll come back and start the painting. Every house needs a strong foundation. I've teamed up with my former college tutor, Cecilia Young, to bring you over 25 years worth of knowledge and experience packed into this fantastic programme. Within these eight individually assessed modules, we've covered the fundamental building blocks required to take your cake decorating skills to the next level. That's not all. Each programme is accredited by FDQ, a leading UK organisation for the food industry. We look forward to welcoming you on the Cakeflix Master Programme. Welcome back to part four and now we're going to do the painting which kind of finishes everything off. So on the uh, polar bear all we had to do was add a little bit of black to his nose. So we'll just pop that on. Oh, shaky 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 hands. A little bit of black to his nose. Now I'm using cocoa butter which I will explain in a moment, because that's what we're going to use to paint the um, the northern lights. So just fill in his little nose there, um, and then down at the the pads of the feet, you could just leave them completely white. To be honest, it's entirely up to yourselves. But um, I also think it looks kind of nice with just a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of a grey colour for a little um, toenails, I suppose. So just a little toenail area, maybe. Nothing too fancy. You can blend it out a wee bit as well. I'm just gonna, gonna dot these on just now. Nothing too defined. You'll notice I'm just dabbing on a wee bit of colour. I'm not really trying to make it look like a perfect toenail. It's not really what I'm looking for. Okay. Just a little bit of colour. Now I didn't put any shading on my polar bear fur because I felt it was fine just the way it is. And I'm going to add just a little bit of dark detailing right in in the ear lobes, in the ears rather. There we are. And then for the eyes, let me see what I can pick up here. Here, small brush, small brush, where are we? Oh yes, perfect. These are sugar press brushes and they're super fine. You can see that on there. Very fine, just a couple of bristles. 
brilliant for this sort of thing. So I'm just going to take some white with a little bit of my cocoa butter. Again, I'll just explain all this in a minute what I'm using here. I'll just quickly do this just now. And I'm just going to dot a little highlight on, if I can do that with my shaky hands. <laughs> there we are. Phew. And one on the other one. Let's go for it. There we are. Makes all the difference. Just a little highlight. A little bit more life, okay? Um, and if you want, on this one, I did paint in like a few, you know, a couple little feet pads and things. So you could do that if you want, but absolutely no need to if you don't. Now, so to do this, I'm using cocoa butter, like I was explaining earlier. So um, I have a metal paint palette here and underneath you can see I've got a, a candle going to keep the cocoa butter um, melted. This could be dangerous, me and a naked flame on a demo. This will be interesting. <laughs> the cocoa butter I'm using is um, Chalk Chick cocoa butter. They're brilliant little nibs. Um, that you can just break up and use a little bit of um, in your palette. So you just pop a little bit um, of one of these in your palette like this. And then I've got some dusts that I'm going to work with. Now I've got some shimmer dusts. So um, I've got Faye Cahill's Pearl White, Pistachio and Rose Gold. And then just to deepen up the colours a little, I've got some um, Rose, some Spring Green and some, what's this one called? Car Caribbean Blue, okay? So um, you don't have to use those exact dusts, but I like using the shimmer dust because it gives a nice wee shimmery look to the um, northern lights, okay? So to start with, I'm just going to get a little bit of my cocoa butter. And I'm going to, let's think, what, I'll do a green one first. Green's quite good. So I'm going to use some of the pistachio and mix that in with my cocoa butter. And I'm going to add a little of the spring green in as well, just to deepen up the colour a little, okay? There we are. And to start with, I'm just using a, a regular round brush, but I've also got these flat brushes, and you'll see why I've got those in just a second. So I'm going to keep them to hand. So this is a, a board just covered in black sugar paste. I think I already said that, but just to recap. So I'm going to take some of my green, and I'm going to think about the pattern that I want. So I think I'll do quite a swooping one this time. So I'm just going to paint a little line like this, the start of my Northern Lights line. And then using the flat brush, I'm just going to start at the very edge of the line and lift. Just drag your brush. And you can see how you get that nice um, kind of light effect. Okay, now you can add more and do it again if you want. So a little bit more. You kind of need to work quickly doing this because the cocoa butter does dry up a little bit. There we are. Okay. And we'll continue doing that. Oops, we'll continue doing that. What did I say about me and Naked Flames? <laughs> we'll continue doing that um, around the board a little bit more. I think I'll put a little bit more there. So using the round brush to paint my line and the flat brush to bring out the light strokes. So just keep them all going in the same direction across the board. There we are. Takes a little while to build up. So just picking a line Around your boards. We'll do quite a sweeping one, this one. And just keep lifting with the round brush, eh, with this flat brush, sorry. So always in the same direction. Once you've chosen your direction, stick with it. We are so getting this really nice shimmery effect. I don't know if the camera will pick up the shimmers, hopefully it will, but it looks really beautiful and shiny. Um, a really nice effect. Okay, we'll just bring that down to the bottom of the board. There we go. Okay, so that's the first ribbon, if you like, 
of Northern Light. So you can see how quite easy that is to do. It's very quick, very, very quick to do. Nice little effect. Okay. So then you can add some other colours in. So let's try, what will we do this time? Will we do a pink one? Let's do a pink one. So I'll just take some cocoa butter. Um, I'm going to use the rose gold this time. And I'm going to add some pink to it. Now there are loads of different shimmer dusts out there. So you might find one that you don't need to add the pink to. I'm just showing you what you can do to mix up the colours to the ones that you, uh, to the sort of depth of colour that you'd like, okay? So let's do a pink one down here, maybe. Grab another flat edged brush and lift up. Try and keep it in the same direction as the ones you've already done. go and if they're crossing over that's fine you just drag over and they'll blend keep in the same direction a little bit more there Okay, so hopefully you can see how that's beginning to blend up. Super shiny too. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see from there. Yeah. So let's do another green one. Maybe just, where will we do this one? Decisions. <laughs> I think we'll do it in here. A slightly different shape. Grab another flat brush. Oops. So whatever shape of line you choose, you just drag up straight from it, straight from the line upwards. Always in the same direction. It's super quick. Quite a nice wee effect, I think. Okay, so you could go back and add like a little bit more green to it to darken it up a little. And maybe add a little extra section of darker, darker green and just work it up in layers. Oops. Make sure your brush is nice and soft so you don't drag off the paint like I just did there. <laughs> there we are. Okay. So last one to do, I think we'll do a little blue one down here at the bottom corner. Just move that up. Let's grab another round brush. And so for the blue, I'm just using some white, um, white shimmer with a little blue added. And we'll do a little blue one down here. Another flat brush. There we are. Something like that. There we are. Okay. So that is basically how I do the pattern. So you can have a look at some Northern Lights pictures and see um, the different patterns it creates, but you can pretty much choose any kind of ribbon effect you like. Um, and then if you want some stars, then the easiest way to do that is like a little toothbrush or, or a paintbrush and just grab some white. So I'm going to use this white sparkle with a little bit of my um, cocoa butter. And you can just flick that down onto your board. 
and that creates lots of little ones. And then to create some bigger stars, just the end of a paintbrush. Just use the end of this one. Pick up some dust on the end of your paintbrush, the other end, the wrong end, if you like. Handle end. And you can just dot some bigger ones on as well. Just randomly, whatever you like. Okay. And you just build that up as much as you like. And there you have your shimmery northern lights to go with your polar bear. So we'll just do a quick recap. So that's the painting now complete. And you can decide yourself what kind of pattern you want, whether you want the sort of thicker, more very sort of wavy ribbons or a slightly looser kind of ribbon. We'll put that in there. You can decide what you like yourselves, you know? Okay? But hopefully that gives you a wee idea and it's super quick. That's what I liked about it. Super quick. So um, the model of the polar bear as well, the last thing I want to say about that was um, if you are going to bend the head a little bit more like this one, then make sure you bend not just the head, okay? We want it to be a nice curve all the way around the back. So put your finger in just above his, well, just at his chest kind of area and bend from there. So just bend it over your finger like that, just very gently, okay? So that he bends from his kind of shoulder area rather than just his head, which would be a bit awkward looking. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. So there's his cute little face, okay? Two little polar bears now. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you're going to give it a go. If you do, make sure to send me pictures. If you want to see close-ups of this, remember you can pop onto my website, which is jmkatecraft.com and you'll see um, little close-ups of the bear and things. I'll make sure to put some on so that you can um, see in more detail for the face and things like that, okay? But thanks um, for joining me and I'll hopefully see you again. <laughs>